Today on Real Life, Deconstructing King David the Great. Author Mark Rutland shares how David remained the man after God's own heart despite his failures. Plus, on Ask the Rabbi, the Lappins respond to a viewer question about marriage. And on Real Life Coaching, Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith explains the importance of making rest sacred. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black. I'm here with my beautiful co host and bride, Terry, and our powerful pastor, J. Anthony Gilbert. Amen. Here we are, brother. On Memorial Day. On, On Memorial, Memorial Day. Here we are. <laughs> yes, yes. We want to just take time, first of all, it is Memorial Day, just to honor and reflect all that have given their lives sacrificially for our freedoms. You know, our servicemen, our first responders, our policemen, all that have willingly laid down their lives for us. I mean, because of that, we're here today. It's I the, think uh, that's, I mean, so our hats, and the families too. We, we forget sometimes to mention the families and the sacrifices that they made as well. Right. Well, the Bible says, greater love has no man that he lays down his life for his friend. And you know, if you're in the military, if you're, I want to extend it and our gratitude to you if you're in any, any kind of position mm -hmm. like in the police office as a police department or as a firefighter, any first responder. Pastor Jay, those men and women are doing the same thing and that's getting increasingly so with all the, the uh, uncertainty in our, call, in mm -hmm. our country. Mm -hmm. So thank God. Amen. That we have men and women who will step up and go out. And I know there's one in, one out of a million that's kind of a bad apple. I understand yeah, that. Sure. But predominantly, these are all men and women that are sacrificing for very little pay. That's right. You took the words right out of well, my mouth. Ahead. I was going to say go they ahead. deserve a whole lot more than what they get. You Absolutely. know, you think about, I mean, this is not taken away from different type of athletes and things like that, but they're, they're not laying down their lives. Because right. these people are putting their lives on the line every single day and get little pay, but That's they do right. it with their whole heart. That's amazing. And I think sometimes, you know, that we always tend to maybe just work, look, focus on maybe the one bad apple. We need to forget that and just focus on the greater good here, folks. Yeah. All of the men and women who have mm -hmm. um, lived their lives for us sacrificially. And that, I think that we need to take this day to celebrate. Well, if you know somebody that is in the Army, military, any kind of uh, armed forces or in uh, first responders, just give them a shout out, a okay. gratitude. Mm -hmm. Just tell them how much you appreciate what they've done. And those who've given their lives, see that's really the main focus is those who've given their lives, family members, anybody like that. Let's just love on them mm -hmm. and tell them that we appreciate their service. Because you know, in our nation, we are a republic that's an experiment. We're in a grand experiment. Our founders put us into an environment that really the odds were against us. It never had been like this. We're the longest living democracy. And so the Lord has been sustaining us for his purposes, for the kingdom of God, Pastor Jay. The Lord has created this nation and those men and women who defend this nation are really on a, on a holy cause mm -hmm. yeah. to defend the freedoms. Because if we don't have the freedom to uh, say what we want to say, here we are on television talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, if we didn't have that freedom, if that was taken away and they say, no, keep that in your church. Now, your pastor, keep that in your church, do whatever you want. That's your freedom to, of religion. That would uh, really constrain our freedoms as a Christian to be able to worship. Well, think about it. The gospel couldn't get out. The United States of America has been the lighthouse yeah, for the brother. gospel across the world. Amen. So we thank God for those people that have laid down their lives and we need to honor them today because without it, we couldn't preach the gospel the way we do, like you just said. No, Absolutely. that's exactly right. well, we're glad you tuned in. Mm -hmm. Glad that you joined. Maybe you're off from work and you've discovered us for the first time. Maybe uh, during the regular work days, you don't get to watch real life. So we enjoy, we welcome you as, as part of our family. You know, that's what we are and what our purpose is. Let me remind you, if you haven't heard, our purpose is to pr pr present real answers for real life's Amen. questions. And where do we get those answers? From the Bible, right from the Bible. Amen. And this is the guidebook. 
this, this tells us where we're going to go, Terry, that's right. because that's God's path that we're following. That's right. And what other, there's no other path that we want to go on. And we're glad that you're joining with us today as we learn more about real answers to real life. And you picked a good program to join because later on in the program, we're going to talk to Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith. And she's a medical doctor, but she talks about rest. And she explains the difference, and this is very, very interesting, the difference between rest and sleep. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, the big difference yeah, between rest and sleep. I didn't sleep. realize that. Okay, what's next? <laughs> well, coming up next on Ask the Rabbi, the Lathans respond to a question about marriage. Let's hear what ancient Hebrew wisdom the rabbi and Susan have for us today. Hi, welcome to today's episode of Ask the Rabbi. My husband, Rabbi Daniel Lappin. I'm Susan Lappin. And here's the question we want to answer today. I have been reading your book, Buried Treasure. And one of the things you said was that if either partner in marriage feels like a martyr, then it's very bad. Can you explain further why and what that portends? Maureen. Well, firstly, Maureen, thank you. We appreciate that you're reading our book. And what we do in the book, Buried Treasure, is we take... I believe it's 27 or 29 Hebrew words, and we do a chapter on each of those words. We look at the shape of the letters, at, at the different words that come out of the root, at all sorts of things that come out of Hebrew that, that you lose when you just translate the word into English. And the word that you were discussing was the word korban, for sacrifice. And we made the point that it's very important to know what a sacrifice is and what a sacrifice isn't and that a misunderstanding of the word sacrifice might be, I just work myself to the bone to take care of my husband. I, you know, I, I just, I don't do anything for myself. I, from the minute I get up in the morning, I just do things for my husband and my family. I don't take a minute for the things that matter to me. I just, I just sacrifice all day. Or maybe it's a husband who says, I hate my job. I go out every day and I sacrifice. It's as if I'm oozing blood from every pore, but it's a sacrifice I make to take care of my wife and my family. That's not what a sacrifice is. And <laughs> we discuss the word korban and what the word actually means. But why, why is that so bad? Why is it so bad for someone to say, hey, I'm selfless. Look, I give so much yeah. to Look, my uh, family. Because God gives us the blueprint of marriage in the nature of the relationship. Um, shall I explain korban now? Or are you gonna, no, go uh, ahead. Um, the, that word sacrifice in Hebrew is based on the Hebrew word to make close. And that's really the, the key part here, I think, that what we really are doing is it's not a sacrifice as we use the word in English. Oh, I can't, I've got to hear another sacrifice I've got to make. No. Uh, you see, the Hebrew word for love means I give. And, and that's really important because when somebody says, I love turkey on Thanksgiving, you're not really saying you love turkey at all because if you did, you wouldn't kill it and eat it. You're saying, I love the feeling I get when I eat turkey. The real Hebrew word for love means I am filled with an insatiable desire to give for you to have. And, uh, and one of the, truly one of the, the biggest gifts a, a wife can give a husband is to give him the privilege of supporting her and taking care of her. And one of the greatest gifts that a wife can give a husband is herself. And, and these, two, these two angles, aspects, really throw a lot of light on the nature of the relationship. Look, uh, every married man knows that he's happiest when his wife is happy. And, and that's really what this is all about. God has created this thing called a marriage where the happiness of each person comes from adding to the happiness of the other person. So the sacrifice is not at all something which is seen as taking away from me. When I have the privilege of doing something for you that makes you happier, it makes me well, happier. I think you could say it's a thermometer. In other words, yes, you should feel good from the giving. Not every second. If my husband has a 6 a.m. flight and so he has to leave the house at 4 a.m., I like sleeping. And so I'm not happy to get up at 3.30 in the morning to see him off, but in the scheme of things, I am. If you're feeling that you're giving, you're feeling resentful and like a martyr, that's a thermometer that says something is going wrong. The overarching feeling you should be giving from the from the giving you should be feeling from the giving that you're doing to your spouse is an increased closeness. If the if the feeling is an increased resentment and increased bitterness, 
that's your thermometer that something's wrong, something needs to be recalibrated. And uh, the thing to remember is that you, it's in your power to always change that. So uh, if you feel that your marriage is sliding into that, don't talk to your spouse, take care of it yourself. Just start being more of a wholehearted loving giver and you'll be amazed at what mm, starts we're coming running back. We're time. I would defer, totally. I disagree with what you just said. Well, we're going to have to <laughs> have a time. I'm not sure what the point of saying that is if we only have about another five seconds. But, <laughs> but that's as far as we can go. So you see, uh, even, even in our marriage, we need to be working at it constantly, as you can tell. Until our next opportunity to, uh, that we're together, we pray that God should bless you with good health and prosperity. Everything else, take care of yourself. Well, I love talks about marriage. Uh, it's one of my passions. And um, I love the thought about having agape because I don't think marriages can make it without having agape love in their relationships. Mm -hmm. Redefine agape for those who are watching that haven't heard that word. Well, agape is the God kind of love. And I believe its simplest form is this. It's giving without expectation of return and doing what's best for you, even if it costs me. Doing what's best, best for, for the other person. For the other person, oh, even if it costs me. Mm. So I'll do what's best for you, even if it costs me. Wow. Agape, agape is not a natural love. No. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, it's, one, it's one of the uh, fruit of the Spirit. It's a supernatural love. And you can only love that kind of love through the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't love that in, a, in your natural sense because you're not made like that naturally, but you're made like that supernaturally by the Spirit. And so that's why it's so important for us to, to always come back to the place and say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your Amen. gifts, Amen. fill me with your fruit, Amen. so that I might could love the way you love. That's right. And that's only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank like God He gave us this Holy Spirit. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, we'd be lost and alone. That's right. Shipwrecked. Well, hey, don't go away because coming up, we're going to talk with uh, a, a friend of mine that is very, very knowledgeable about probably one of the favorite characters out of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. If I was going to tease you guys, and you saw who it already is, but King David. Yep. Think about King David. He rises to the pinnacle. He's very, very, very popular. We're going to find out the inside story about King David. Don't go away. Cornerstone family, Terry and I want to personally invite you to join us this October in Israel. This is going to be a trip unlike any tour to Israel. We're keeping it small so that we have personal time together as we worship, fellowship, and explore. Our focus is going to be on the prophetic, past, present, and what is yet to be fulfilled. Israel is where God's Word comes alive. Space is limited. So call today or go online to get all the details. Going to Israel is a life-changing experience. To make it as affordable as possible, we've kept the price under $4,000. We would be honored for you to join us as we visit Israel, the land of prophetic promise. Tara, when we think about Bible characters, and let's leave Jesus off the page. Right. Who is your favorite Bible character? Oh, that's a tough one. Well, well I'm going to talk about hard questions. I mean, we just finished a woman of valor, so okay. I would probably just say, for me, I love Ruth. Ruth. She's my very favorite woman Bible character. But I know, I bet yours. Well, you like Paul. I like Paul in the New Testament. I like King David in yes, the Old Testament. Yes. What can we say? Well, you didn't say older well, I and guess new. I, did. I, didn't give I love rules. King David too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he's one of the greatest heroes in mm -hmm. the in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But his life was more complex than just slaying a giant. In the new book, David the Great, Mark Rutland explores the complicated life of King David and Mark. What a joy it is to have yes. you here. Thank you. On your it's, it's a great, uh, great honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Likewise, we are filled with honor that you're here with us today. Thank I just got to say, we didn't do an introduction for yes. doc, Dr. Mark Rutland. I don't right. know why we didn't get doctor on this book. What happened? No. <laughs> but, but he is one of the premier, has been the pre, one of the premier Christian educators in the, in the nation for a long time. I won't Absolutely. put name, uh, well, let's still put years on it, but leading two of the great universities, Christian Absolutely. universities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It was an honor. It was a great time in my life. I enjoyed both universities and 
Uh, we had tremendous, tremendous results there, and it, w it was a great season. I really enjoyed it. I think of all the young people that you have mentored and inspired and led, and your organization has done that, and what they've done over the course of these years. Mm -hmm. It's got to make you proud. Well, it, it, it does, I guess, in a sense. It makes me feel satisfied. I, yeah. I'm gratified at it, and I meet them all over. I hear from them thousands and thousands uh, in any given year of s nearly 20 years in higher education. We had thousands on the campus at any given time. Sure. And uh, they're scattered all over the world uh, right. serving the Lord. And it is, it's a tremendous blessing in my life. Absolutely. Now, also, not only were you in higher education at Southeastern or know, are you, you also have a ministry that, is, that works with orphans. Global Servants mm -hmm. is our um, mission work and uh, an NGO, and we have a girls' home in Southeast Asia, House of Grace, uh, helping uh, tribal girls to uh, avoid the trap of uh, sex trafficking, particularly yeah. child sex trafficking. We mm -hmm. uh, took the approach of being an interdiction agency. In other words, not rescuing girls out of the trade, but trying to take them straight from villages and get, a, get ahead of it. Before it happens. Oh, and uh, the okay. appetite for children worldwide is, the sexual appetite for children is horrible. Really? It's just a satanic. It's, it's satanic. Satanic, it really mm -hmm. is a demonic thing. Uh, your first time here with us on Real Life, and so we have a tradition. Before we get into your topic, we have a tradition about you introducing yourself to our family, about your family. Where are you from? And tell us about your wife and a little bit about your children, a little bit about you. Allison and I have been married uh, this summer, 51 years. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been an uh, unbroken bliss for me, and Allison's had two or three minutes of happiness. <laughs> in the, uh, we have three children, and each of our three children have three children. So oh, we, wow. uh, I didn't ask them to make it a perfect square. I don't know how that happened. But <laughs> we have nine grandchildren, and um, uh, all of our children are married wow. happily. Uh, long marriages. <clears throat> uh, our son pastors a church and is also the president of Global Servants okay. uh, now. And then uh, our baby daughter oversees our work in uh, Southeast Asia. She lives in the U.S. Wow. and oversees wow. that. Our middle daughter is married to a physician in California. Now, where is home base for you? In the Atlanta area. Okay. Um, I'm also on the preaching team with Jensen Franklin okay. uh, at Free Chapel. So we live uh, not too far from Gainesville, north, okay. northeast Atlanta. Sure. And uh, we, are, uh, we are loving it. Well, you okay. have to be a bulldog. You have to be a bulldog. Be, or be, Atlanta be. Falcon. Well, you can be Falcon. Okay, okay so what, <laughs> what, what, what started you honing in to focus on David? Well, actually, as you said, your people are just fascinated with David. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I have been. I mean, it's not unique to me. He is just an absolutely intriguing personality. But what I wanted was to get behind the sort of sanitized Sunday school version. Mm -hmm. uh, the the curly-headed little kid who slays the giant. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then there are people who know two things about David. David and Goliath and David and Bathsheba. Right. And I, I said, there's got to be more story there. There's got to be more person. I wanted to explore the man, mm -hmm. the real behind the scenes man. And the more I got into it, the more intrigued and fascinated I became. Well, and, you're, and how you present it is just such a, it's an easy read, you know, and it, and it makes you like, I, like I, when you bring up points, like he wasn't that great of a father, mm you know, with his kids and disciplining them and how he dealt with them. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that about David. And David was, mm -hmm. a, David was a complex, multifaceted genius mm -hmm. in wide range of genres. And he was good at a lot of things. What he was not good at was family. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing I wanted to say. Let, let's, not, let's not have this uh, tidied up version of David. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to, to see the reality. It doesn't... The fact that David failed at things and failed horribly mm -hmm. doesn't make him a monster. Right. And we don't have to block that out in order to make him something he wasn't. That's he true. was a great man. Yeah. And uh, he is a central figure of the Bible. That absolutely. Well, how, how, mm -hmm. how can, how can um, God call David a man after his own heart, which he did, when all of the things that 
he, David did. I mean, he was a violent man. Yes. He was an unfaithful man. He, and this wasn't, this extended through his life. Even on his, on his deathbed, he, he wasn't a kind man. He was a king. He was ruthless. But, he's, but God said, he's a man after my own heart. Yes. One of the reasons that you've really put your finger on the critical issue. What I wanted above all things was I wanted to draw men to read about David. Uh, David was a man's man. Mm -hmm. He was a warrior's warrior. That's right. Uh, this is the kind of guy you want to take deer hunting with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you might not want him to take your wife deer hunting. <laughs> <laughs> he, was a, he was a tough guy. Yes. Um, and, and he was a man with deep inner flaws. Mm -hmm. But he, the way I see David, he's like one of these high octane running backs uh, on a super football team. When he gets through into the secondary, he comes at you. Okay, you may bring him down temporarily. But A, he's going to fall for three and a half yards. And, and furthermore, you know you don't have him down permanently. He's going to get up and come at you again and again and again because his, that running back's eyes are so fastened on the goal, so fastened on the end zone that he, he, even if he falls, he's going to get up and go again. Mm -hmm. I believe when it says David was a man after God's own heart, mm -hmm. I think it means he was after God's heart. He was pursuing mm -hmm. God's heart. And his eyes are so fixed on the prize. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that say to us? Mm -hmm. We're going to, people fall. That's right. But yeah. when you fall, fall forward. Mm -hmm. Fall at the foot of the cross mm -hmm. and rise mm -hmm. to go again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You study the life of Joseph. He's so pure. He's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Daniel. These are, but David is a man there. Any man anywhere can relate to David. And women too. Mm -hmm. was it, wasn't it the reason that he um, couldn't build a temple because he had been so violent? I'm talking about a fighter who was on the front row. Well, it says in the Bible that he slain ten thousands. Personally, of people. we're talking yeah. about personal, mm -hmm. personally engaging in warfare. Mm -hmm. I went through one time and I was going to calculate how many people David either killed personally or were killed by his extended agencies, mm -hmm. uh, soldiers or armies or whatever. When I got into the tens of thousands, I just dropped it. Mm -hmm. um, an interesting story. I was working on this book in Israel. I was up at Tiberias. I was sitting in an outdoor picnic table, and an Israeli lady walked up and asked me what I was writing. I said, I'm writing a book about David, King David. She stepped back and got a horrible look on her face, and she said, why would you write about that bloody man? And she just turned around and walked out. This is an Israeli woman. Mm. And I thought, what manner of man is this mm -hmm. that 3,000 years after his death can make a woman that angry? Right, that's right. <laughs> and, and who would have an impression? He was, he was a bloody man mm -hmm. in many ways. But then turn around and have this sensitive poetic heart. Right. He was a musician. That's right. He, he was a child prodigy of music. Mm -hmm. he, he won the Israeli version of The Voice. <laughs> He sure did. And you know, throughout your book too, you also input your way, wise advice, you know, lessons on leadership. But he calls himself. Old Dr. Mark. I don't see you as being old, that, but you put that in there. It's like, where's from? old Dr. Mark at? <laughs> well, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to make it practical. For, I was trying to reach two people. Women read books. Women buy books and read books. I wanted men to buy this book, read it, enjoy it. And it's really worked. One lady bought like six cases. I said, ma'am, what are you doing? <laughs> Do you mind if I ask? And she said, my son is a master sergeant. She oh. said, I'm buying one, a book for every man in his unit. Oh, oh, that's wow. good. Another man bought one for all the police in his town, for every officer in the town where he lives. That's good. It's, it's, it's doing exactly what I felt. David would be pleased with this. Mm. Hey, this is a so, great Father's Day gift. It is a great Father's oh, Day gift. Good idea. So, yeah. The book's called David the Great, mm -hmm. and you can come to our website. We're going to show you where you can get it, probably get it anywhere you can get books, but we'll give you a link to where mm -hmm. you can find this book. I highly encourage you to go and get a copy for yourself. Maybe get a copy for your husband, maybe your granddad, maybe for your sons. Read it first, though. <laughs> Women, read. too, can read it, too. Oh, first. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, Terry enjoyed That's the right. book. I did. But Mm -hmm. uh, we will thank you for coming. I, we're we're going to go see what's in the news. We'll keep Dr. Mark right here. We're going to come back, bring Pastor Jay out. But let's go see what Sydney's found in the news.
One family finally has peace this Memorial Day after the remains of a sailor killed during D-Day has been identified. For 76 years, loved ones of Henry Glenn Tipton prayed for answers. Tipton was a member of the Church of Christ in Arkansas, and he was just 20 years old and aboard the USS Oklahoma when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. DNA testing confirmed Tipton was among the many who lost their lives on that date, which will live in infamy. A military funeral service for Tipton is planned in June at the Wings of Honor Museum in Arkansas. And as many hit the roads this holiday weekend, one church blessed drivers before the trips. Victory Christian Center spent more than $3,200 to buy gas for cars. The church filled up the tanks of the first 100 cars that stopped at a local gas station. Members say the random act of kindness was a way to give thanks to the community it served over the last decade. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a wonderful Memorial Day. Pastor Jay, now when you think about character, I'm going to do the same thing I did to Terry. Who's your favorite Old Testament character? Without a doubt, David. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think because we can relate to him. He's such a relatable man. You know, a, a lot of them, we just see the pros of what they did. But with him, you see the ins and outs and all the things. And I love the reality of this book. Mm -hmm. Well, when you think about what the Lord has used to minister to me the most, is going to be Jesus and then the Psalms. Oh, yeah. Paul, Paul's in there. Probably Jesus, Paul, and the Psalms mm -hmm. is really how God has he's used the whole word, but those are the places that come alive to me in times of need. You know, when you get that place of need, Mark, you looking for help, go look in the Psalms. Well, you think about David writing the Psalms. We talked about him being such a man of war, and, and he lived in a warlike age. Remember, he lived in the Bronze Age yeah. 3,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. he, David lived 1,000 years before Jesus. Mm -hmm. People forget how ancient the world was and violent the world was. But then he writes the 23rd Psalm. Mm. It's highly contemporary. Yeah. And it's been translated into more than 5,000 languages. Yeah. It's the most often quoted and memorized passage of scripture in two of the world's major religions. Yeah. And David, this warrior wrote this. How about the 22nd Psalm? It's quoted. Jesus quotes the 22nd Psalm on the cross. Yes, he does. Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm -hmm. Jesus quotes that as he dies. That validates the prophetic nature of, wow. of David's poetry. Well, here, here's, here's what we want you to hear, if you didn't hear anything else in this, in this time. No matter what you've done in the past, Dr. Mark, no matter what, God wants you to turn around and come back to him. That's, that's actually the greatest point of David's life. David is called a man after God's own heart. It doesn't mean he never failed. It doesn't mean he never fell, which he did. David was like the girl with the curl in the middle of his forehead. When he was good, he was very good. <clears throat> when he was bad, he was horrid. And his sins were huge. They were terrible, not just Bathsheba. But David committed uh, a sin of arrogance and pride to do a census that caused the death of 70,000 Israelis because of a plague that he unleashed because of his sin. But what did David do? In Psalm 51, he says, cleanse me, O Lord, purge me with hyssop. David pleads for the blood of an eternal sacrifice. And then he says, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. In other words, a thousand years before Jesus, David is expressing faith for redemption in shed blood and for sanctification through the power of the Holy Spirit. You can do the same thing right now, right where you are. Right now, right now. Call 888-665-4483 and stand back up. Get back up. Call us. We want to pray together with you and see you take that next step. Because God has another step for you. You're not done yet. You're not done. The Lord has a, a, a master plan and you're going to go forward. and Be like King David. Get up, shake yourself off and go back into the fight. Go back into the fight. Hey, don't go away. We're going to come back with our coaching. We're going to talk about sleep versus rest and how it's a, a sacred rest. That's what God has in store for us. So you don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our coaching. Interested in a product featured on today's Real Life? Now you can find all of your favorite books, CDs, DVDs, gifts, and more. All in one place at ctvn.org backslash shop. Real Answers for Real Life, now delivered right to your mailbox. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. Here at Cornerstone, we want you to be in the loop. 
Call now for Real Life Today, the free newsletter that will keep you up to date on all of our programs and specials. It has encouraging articles and behind the scenes stories. Real Life Today, the little newsletter that packs a giant punch. Call now. Welcome to Real Life Coaching. It's our goal to help you become the very best you possible. And then when you're the best you, you can win in life. And you can win in life God's way. In this fast-paced world, we often sacrifice God's sacred rest. All so busy, all so fast-paced, all so timed. Everything's so timed. Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith begins her coaching session with us today on the seven types of rest. Let's get started with coaching. Dr. Sundra, I'm so glad we could be together to talk about this important topic. I want to learn on it for myself because sleep and rest and being in peace, boy, that's a promise from God. But so many of us have difficulties, difficulties finding a place that we could be at rest. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a simple first question. How do you define the difference between sleep and rest? That's so important. Sleep and rest are two completely different things. Sleep is a biological function, so we all have to sleep. In the medical profession, if someone goes without sleep for too long, they actually become confused. They lose their ability to concentrate and they're not able to function. However, most of the world spends every day resisting their need for rest. You don't have to rest, rest is a choice. And that's the, the thing that we have to understand is that sleep is a biological function. You must do it. Rest requires you to make the time to rest. And so when I take a look at rest, the first thing that came to mind to me was coming from Isaiah. Isaiah 30, 15. This is an area where God started talking to me about my own personal need for rest. It says, in returning in rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. And in one translation, it says, in quietness and trust. And that's a big aspect of rest. You have to trust that you can relax, that you can take time away, that you can step aside and let God be control and not always feel like you have to have your hands grasping on life so tightly that you can't relax. So when we look at physical rest, there's really seven different types of rest total, but there's some that everyone seems to, to already know about. And one of those is physical rest. Physical rest and sleep, that's where the confusion oftentimes comes into, into play. Because when you think of physical rest, we're only often thinking about the passive type of rest that people need. And so the passive types of rest is sleep and napping. Those are the things that don't require your participation. Sleep is biological. Once you go through the stages of sleep, your body will take over at that point. And there are, just so that we kind of understand, that there are five different stages of sleep. And those five stages include non-REM, they're divided into non-REM and REM sleep. And non-REM has four different phases. And the first phase, a lot of us are familiar with because it's that kind of pre-sleep. You're just relaxing, your body starts unwinding some. But you're not really um, at that level where you are getting restoration or any benefit from it. The second type uh, of non-REM, the second stage, is where you first start beginning to get a little bit of, of light sleep. A lot of times, this is when people tend to wake up uh, easily when they hear any kind of sound. I call it the mommy sleep. So if you're a mother and you have kids and they fall asleep and, and they're at that age where you have the monitor in your room, the second they, you hear a sound and you're out of the bed ready to run to them, that's stage two. You can quickly wake up and move and do what you need to do. But once you get deeper into stage two, you move into stage three sleep. And stage three is where restoration begins. That's where the mind and the body and the spirit can start getting improvement, revival. It can start restoring the things that need to be restored in your life. And then stage four of non-REM sleep, if you have kids, you've probably have had them fall asleep in the car and then you pick them up and they're like a rag doll. That's stage four. 
And that's very difficult for most of us adults. We have a hard time letting our body and our mind and our spirit get to that point where we are fully just in relaxation state. But it is possible. And the way you get there is through rest. Rest is that bridge that connects us from our day-to-day -day life into the level of deep, restorative, high-quality sleep that most of us need. And once we get to that stage three and stage four, that's when we then are able to move over into that type of REM sleep where we are able to hear things and be able to have creative thoughts, able to have dreams and visions because we're no longer holding on so tightly to our own mindsets about things. So that's part of the difference between sleep and rest. Now in physical rest, as I mentioned, the, the passive aspect, now I wanna talk about the active aspect of physical rest. There is an active component to physical rest where the body is restored through the muscles. And this is where it's so important to your day-to-day -day activity. Because if you work in an environment where your body has a tendency to hold tension, whether that's in your shoulders or your neck, back pain, these are huge issues for a lot of us. Active physical rest is being attentive to those areas of your body that have stress that hold on to stress, that hold on to discomfort. And so what you do with active physical rest is you're trying to restore the blood flow to these areas throughout the day. If you're at a desk all day, how do you get more active physical rest? By taking time to take some breaks to stand up, stretch your muscles, do a little bit of self-massage in the muscles in the neck and the shoulder area if that's tense for you. Facial massage. A lot of people hold tension in their face and their jaw and they end up with TMJ. These are some of the small things that we do throughout our day because really a restful lifestyle is not just about taking a two hour break once a week to go get a pedicure or it's not just about finding time to get a massage. It's an ongoing assessment of what in your life is being depleted, how you're using your body and how to restore those areas. And then there's physical, the other type of um, rest is spiritual rest. So we talked about the physical, so now let's look at the spiritual. Spiritual rest is more about focusing on your relationship with God and not just about religion. It's not just about knowing that you belong to a certain religious belief, but that God wants intimacy with us. There is a level of intimacy with God that allows us to be able to have that trust that is needed to fully rest. One of the things I loved about that portion from Isaiah 30, 15, and really it's 30, 12 through 15, it's the beginning part of that segment uh, where God is talking about, to the Israelites about their lack of ability to rest. And I love what he, how he ends it. He ends it by saying, I've told you that this is what is needed. I told, I've told you that in returning and resting is how you benefit and move forward, but you refuse to. And I think that's so often what many of us do. We feel just like the Israelites that we haven't seen certain things happen in our lives. So we then take on the responsibility of doing more work and trying to be more productive as if every blessing has to come from the work of our own hands, our own ability to strive and to continue to push. But our life shouldn't be one of continual striving. There is a place in God where we can take time with Him and allow that rest to become restorative and allow the strength and the power that we get from those times of intimacy to take us into our day-to-day -day activities. And then one of the final types of rest I wanna discuss with you today is about mental rest. If you've ever tried to go to sleep at night after a busy day and find that your head is spinning, you're going through all of the different woulda, coulda, shouldas that you wish you'd said during a conversation or all the things that you feel like you need to do as you're going throughout your day and you're supposed to be getting ready for sleep, but sleep won't come as long as you're having this, what we call monkey brain syndrome. It's like thoughts are swinging in your, in your mental space, just cluttered, and you're not able to get that clarity of your mind to be able to relax and to allow yourself to, to unwind enough to get into those deeper, deeper types of sleep. This is where mental rest comes in. And what mental rest does is it wipes the slate clean so that you're able to then go to sleep. One of the, the key portions of 
learning how to practice mental rest at nighttime, if this is a problem for you, is to keep a little pe uh, piece of paper at your bedside, a notepad, so it could be a journal. It, honestly, it doesn't have to be fancy. I oftentimes tell people just get a post-it note. When the mind is holding on to a thought, any thought, negative or positive, when you're trying to go to sleep, it will refuse to let go of that thought because as far as it's concerned, it's protecting you. It's holding on to vital information that you have deemed important. So it won't let it go as long as you continue to re repeat it, as long as it's going through that cycle. So one simple mental rest tool for people who suffer with this is write down whatever keeps repeating in your mind right before you go to bed. Don't analyze it, don't try to process it. Sleep is, right before you go to bed is not the time to process deep thoughts. Write it down so that your mind will then let it go. And then what you do is you can go back to whatever that is and process it at a later time. Also, if you're one of those people who happen to run your to-do list through your head as you're going to bed, then allow yourself to write that to-do list out so that you're not letting that go around and around. The other part of mental rest is learning how to let go of negative thought patterns. Because so often the negative aspects of our lives are what we want to focus on. And that can never lead to a good spot. Yes, it's good to reflect on it, to learn from it, to grow from it, but we can't allow it to become a, a repeat cycle in our mental pattern because what happens at that point is then it becomes a stronghold. And so one thing to, that I love having people do is to replace negative thought patterns throughout your day with positive thought patterns. So if, if you're constantly thinking about what you did wrong, I love just picking an, an attribute of God's nature and character. Pick some aspect of who he is that you're going to focus on during the day. And so whenever something comes into your head that looks negative, I go back to that. If I'm thinking that I'm unlovable because of something that I've done or an attitude that I've had, I go back to the thought that God is love and that he loves, his love is unconditional. Yes, I might need to repent of something that I've done, but he is willing to forgive. And so being able to continue to go back to his character keeps me connected and keeps me free from the, from the burden of that and, and at the ability to trust and to continue to return to him and to receive the rest that I need. Now, as we're looking at the seven types of rest, we've gone through three of them so far today. I want you to think about what type of rest is, are you most needing? What type of rest do you need to be able to start feeling restored, empowered, and renewed? I have a quiz that I, that I, I welcome for you to take. It's at restquiz.com. And when you take that quiz, what will happen is you'll get a result from me that will tell you which type of rest you're most efficient in. Now, that's not a pass-fail grade. Believe me, if it was, I would have failed it when I took it the first time. What it really is is an assessment to help you be able to identify which type of rest you most need. Because once you're able to identify it, then you have the power to change it. Then you're able to know this is where I need to get the most, this is where I would get the most benefit from taking a look at this area and allowing God to come in with his power and with all that he brings during those times of sacred rest to help you be able to feel renewed and restored. Wow, I'm really processing what you've been teaching. It's what it comes back to, and you started it with, is that the rest leads to sleep. Mm -hmm. I never put those two together. So many people are suffering with insomnia. Yeah. I don't know, some staggering percentage of Americans are suffering with insomnia mm -hmm. and trying to find the answer for insomnia. And it's okay to take, I think it's okay for them to take medications to help in that regard. But the true answer, if I'm hearing you right, mm -hmm. is you're going to find the answers to the sleep when you find the rest in the other areas. That's so true. Over two-thirds of the population struggles with this. Forty million people 40 million. struggle with insomnia. And yes, absolutely it's okay to, to use the medication when needed to help get the sleep you need. But really the goal will be to get to the point where we no longer need it. So you use it for a season to kind of help you be able to get that sleep. Well, and, and folks, maybe that's you. Statistically, that's a lot of us that are watching together. Having that issue with sleep and insomnia and not being able to fall asleep or stay asleep, and billions of dollars are spent just to try to combat that. Here's a new revelation. And I thank, I thank God for our sister who's a new revelation is we're going to get to the place of sleep 
when we get to the place of peace. That's God's rest. That's why this book's so important, because this is a work that has great research behind it, great details. It's not a simple sleep book where you just says take some of this and some of that and some herbal supplements and stay out of the light and you know all those are good things, but that's to get to sleep. We're talking about getting to rest, to get into that place of rest in God. It's a supernatural experience in rest. That's what my goal is, and that's what my goal is for you too. So I want to give you a copy of this book. I guarantee you this, it's going to give you what you need to understand the process of coming to that place of peace. And not only the book, but also, and this is a great hardback book, also the DVD that was recorded by Dr. Saunders, she's been here with us, to help you reinforce the teaching, reinforce the information, so that you can gather together what you need to take that next step. And with your gift to the ministry, I'm not going to give you a price for it. There's no price. Now, you could probably go on Amazon and get it for a certain price. But we're going to just say, you can't get the DVD and the book together, but we're going to say whatever your gift is to this ministry to help us take the gospel of Jesus out to as many people as we can. Share with us in the ministry. We're going to share with you in your life real answers for real life. So call the number that's on the screen. Call right now. We'll get a copy for you, and we'll rush it off to you. We'll even take care of the shipping and the handling. Now, Dr. Saunders is going to be with us all week long as our coach. So tomorrow we're going to talk about the types of rest that we don't really know that very much about. Of course, I didn't know much about the last one. So stay tuned. And as we get to this place of peace, this place of supernatural rest, the place that we can become the man and woman God wants us to be, we're able to live a life that's supernatural and things start happening in around us. Supernatural events happen. They're called testimonies. Here's a testimony. Saturday, March the 2nd, 2013, I was moving furniture and I started getting some chest pain, minor. Uh, I thought it was my asthma because I have asthma. So I told my lady friend to go get me my asthma medicine. So she did and I took a couple puffs and I sat down because it usually takes a few minutes for it to kick in. The pain started getting worse. After a few minutes, it was at the point where it felt like there was just someone just pushing as hard as they could on my chest. And I said, call an ambulance. I, I don't think this is an asthma attack. They get there, they took me in the ambulance, and, and, and they sent all the information to the hospital, and the hospital said he's having a heart attack. We get to the hospital, and they cut my clothes off in the emergency room, and I said, look, I have two daughters. You need to call them. I need to see them. I felt I was going to die. The pain was so bad, I couldn't breathe. I thought it was over. And I said, Lord, just let me stay alive long enough to see my children. And here they came. I felt just a relief and the pain started to go away. I hugged them both and told them how much I love them. And I thought, God will take care of me. So they told me I had some major damage in the top part of my heart and on the left side of my heart. It was a bad heart attack. I should have died. And I told everybody, I said, God healed me. I was on death's doorstep and God brought me through. God has made me appreciate as I've gotten older and after going through this heart attack again, I appreciate my friends, my, my family so much. And I'm so thankful that he saved my life. So thankful. Thank you, Jesus. What a powerful story of God's love and grace and mercy. Amen. You know, he's here for us. You know, the Lord's here for us. He's not far off. He's not, he's not waiting for you to, to do certain things. He's just waiting for us to respond to him in the faith. That's all. You don't have to earn your way there. Just respond in faith. And I, that testimony tells that story. God's love in action. Right. Terry, there's nothing like it. There is nothing like it, you know, just to see God's love in action and just to restore in so many ways with his family, with his health. Thank God. Speaking mm -hmm. of restoring, now that's what this teaching from Dr. Um, Dr. Smith is all about, restoration really. You know, the title is called Sacred Rest, but it really is about how to be restored physically, spiritually, and emotionally. 
How do you be restored? Because it's in that process of rest. And this, mm -hmm. I got so much out of just being across the chair from her. I bet. That uh, was, first she's an MD. She's mm -hmm. a medical doctor. She's a general in internist. Mm -hmm. So she knows a lot about the body. And she's a spirit-filled Christian who's been walking in faith for a long, long time. So she, she's got a lot of reference points. Mm -hmm. And then we start listening to what she's talking about, the different kinds of rest. That's Big right. revelation, Pastor Jay, sleep doesn't equal rest. Right, you know, and let me just say real quickly, you could watch Christian television from now till kingdom come and you may never find this type of teaching on Christian television. That is and you true. know, and I think what's neat about this is that there's a lot of people and those of you that are watching that are tired, but you have the type of tired that sleep doesn't help. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what rest does. Rest so. is when you have that place of where your mind is at ease, spiritually you're where you need to be, and we need that. We need that in our lives. We have to take that evaluation and look at ourselves and see where do we may do some adjustments in our world. Well, if, if we take God's example to heart, he worked six days and then he rested. Yeah. Now, I don't, and then the Bible teaches us too, Terry, that God never sleeps nor slumbers. Right. So that seventh day wasn't a nap time for God. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, right, right. say, let me go take a nap. It was a rest time for regeneration in the spirit world. And, right. and, right. and if that's our model, if God showed us that as our model, we better take, we better take that to heart. Mm -hmm. Many of us haven't. Well, I appreciated how she provided practical insight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when she talked about um, like just the different stages of sleep, I didn't realize all those different stages <laughs> where the dreams come in. But for me, about physical rest, about just as simple as doing stretches, getting your body moving and your blood flow, that that's a rest that your body needs. I thought, I never thought about anything like that before, but it makes sense. It's not a passive, rest is not a passive, which passive means that you don't really do anything. It's, in, it's a type of form that we are actively engaged in. Rest is something that you have to do something to be at rest. Well, I want to rest more, and I want you yeah. to mm -hmm. rest more too. And so that's why this book is, is our offer to you. Right. Tremendously well-researched and written book about the science and the spiritual truth of rest and sleep. Two-thirds of America have insomnia. That means a lot of you guys are wrestling with insomnia. I wrestle with it on a on a time-to-time -time basis. Just the other night, I'll tell you that testimony in just a minute. I want you to have this book and I want you to have this DVD. It's our gift to you. This is her on teaching on DVD and this is the teaching in the print form. And we want to give this to you with your best gift to Cornerstone, to the, to the ministry at Cornerstone. Some people give $25, some people give $45, some people give $30. You just ask God what you should give. And you're going to get a hardback book and you're going to get an hour long DVD. You just, and we're going to send it to you with no shipping charges. So you decide what your gift is back to the ministry. Most important that you get the teaching because too many of us are weary I mean bone weary. You know, you ever heard that? Yeah. Bone weary. And the other night, so I'm working on, we're having a, a board of directors uh, session coming up and I'm working on all the financials and all the presentation. That's a big event when you have your board come in. And so I'm working on that into the, into the early evening, eight, nine, 10 o'clock on the computer and I'm just shuffling things around. And I went to bed, I used to go to bed around 11 o'clock. That's normally my, try to get the lights out, read, read and then the lights out. That night I couldn't sleep. I fell asleep, but I couldn't stay asleep. Mm -hmm. You ever had that kind of mm -hmm. night? Mm -hmm. We just pop up and then you go, whoa, what, what, what? And then you go back and you're just restless. It's restless sleep. And that's an example of what she's talking about in her third type of rest, the mental rest. Because I did what she, I didn't do what she said to do was put that stuff aside. And, 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 not, and not, not think about it that time of the night and, and make my list and write them down and get them all out of my head mm -hmm. and put them over on the nightstand so that I'm ready to go. You, That's a good you're idea. a list maker. I am. I am. I totally identified. She called it monkey brain syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, boy, I can relate because my mind is a whirl and I, I think about all these things. I have to decompress and I, yeah. I, I appreciate reminding me that lists are okay and it's good to write down things, but not to process it. That's sometimes what you 
sort of dwell on, you know, and then you start evaluating and then you get negative, like, oh, I should have, could have, would have. And we just need to just say, okay, this is my thought, writing it down. God, I'm just going to focus on a positive attribute of who you are. I need to do more of that at night. You know, and the Bible says that in Hebrews chapter four, we have to labor to enter into the rest of God. Mm -hmm. So it lets us know that it isn't easy. And you said earlier that rest is not a passive thing. Or, right. Yeah, it's not a passive thing. It's something that we have to be active with. And so if you think about that, Brother Don, you know, that means that like, it's not just laying our heads down on a pillow. We have to do something to labor to get to that rest. And the Bible says when we've done that, we cease from our own works and we enter into the finished work of God. But I was just going to remind you that the, the word that God, He invites us to enter His rest. Mm -hmm. That rest, read Hebrews. Go, go and read Hebrews. If you want to read about the rest of God and the power of rest, go, go study the book of Hebrews because it focuses, Paul, I think Paul wrote Hebrews, focuses on rest a lot. So here's the book and the DVD. Your opportunity to put this in, in action in your life and watch your, change your, your way you think, change the way you, you work. And you know, and if you're using sleep medication or, all, or things that help you sleep, that's okay. There's no condemnation in that. There's a better way though. The better way is to get back into where you can have spiritual rest, spiritual peace, and let your mind, the physical is gonna take care of itself once the spiritual is taken care That's of. Right. So get the book, get the DVD, put them in action in your life. Call 888-665-4483 and we'll rush it right off to you and you can watch and see how God, and then you know when we do these, I'd love for you to get back to us and tell us a testimony. You know, I got that book on rest and, you know, I put it in work and look what the Lord has done. We want to hear your testimony because mm -hmm. it's in the power of the testimony that other people can be impacted. Other Amen. people can be, uh, can be blessed. Amen. Well, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Not only do we overcome, but I believe others overcome as well. And we like to hear back mm -hmm. from whatever it is that God's doing. Let us hear, you know, we always send the word out, send the word out, send the message out, but it's always good to hear back Absolutely. how the word is impacting somebody's life. That's wow, right. and listen, Absolutely. praise God. Uh, just got a report from a, somebody who's received the Lord as their Savior. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, look at Robin, I think Robin is your name. And, this is what you come to know Jesus as your Savior. Thank God. Robin, welcome to the family of God. We're going to send you some free information about uh, what's next in your life. You've just taken the most Amen. important first step of your life, and God's going to meet you and supernaturally bless you. Let's, let's pray, brother. Will Amen. you pray for our, yes. our prayer request? Father, we thank you today, Father, for this wonderful word and time together. And we thank you for every request that's here. So, Lord, I pray that we'll have faith and that, Lord, that we will rest, yes, Father, God. and that our rest would lead to sleep, and, Lord, that we will trust you in all yes, of our ways, Father, and lean out on our own understanding. And, Father, we thank you for blessing every need today, sealing it in the testimony of the blood of Jesus. You, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. and amen. Well, it, it, in my spirit, I just want to, uh, re to reinforce that you're not condemned. The things that we wrestle with are not us. They're, they're the influences outside of us. The real you is at peace with God. Find that real you on Real Life next program. Real Answers for Real Life. We'll see you tomorrow. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.